Hi all, my name is Dylan Collingbourne, Team Alan Sailor and RS Terra Southern Coach and Representative. Today we're going to be doing some rigging guides for the RS Terra. There are bookmarks down below in the description, so if you want to skip ahead just for rigging on a kicker, for an outhaul, they are down below, so go ahead and check those out. Apart from that, let's get cracking, let's get going. First things first, what we are going to do is we're going to set up our traveller. The key point of our traveller is we have an adjustable one so we can tighten it and just so we can tighten it as much as we can. We don't really want it loose. The looser it is, the more of a triangle we're going to get. So it will come up to the middle and that will just mean our boom comes into the middle. We want our boom to hit the corners on either tack just so it doesn't destroy our pointing and we just get that little bit more power. So we've added a few um, Allen High Load 15mm thimbles just so we can get that little bit extra purchase. So what we're going to do, got one end with the Hercules ring already um, spliced on, the other end we're going to feed down the back hole of the corner boat. After that, going to head up the front one, pull that all the way through, him thimble, the Hercules ring hits that corner. So that will be what it will look normally. So if you just have one rope, it's probably going to like that. But what we're going to do, we're going to go down, back up, and we can have a little bit more purchase there. Before we do that, always remember that block because it's always a way you try and load it on, stand back and you realize you've forgotten the block. Feed that on. Down the front hole, and then up the back. Just to add that extra purchase, just gonna splice another high low thimble on. So, very simple. Pull fit through the rope. Get the end. Start pulling through. Just give it a wiggle. That'll come through. All the way so you get close and just place the high low thimble through there. Then from there, try and get it a bit more equal. Gonna get the end through the right side, through the left side. Quick stop and knot, just so you have something to grip onto, and then you can pull that on as tight as you can. And just a few half hitches just to lock it off. So it's just a little bit tighter, hits the corner. What we have here, we've got two protectors either side, just PVC tape. Um, just so it gives that a bit of sponge. So when the block does hit either side, it doesn't damage the boat, but also a little bit of grip when you're hiking out, when you're playing them. Class rules on this quickly is you can change this on the water, but make sure it is between races, not during a race. So in between races, if it has slipped a little, you can tighten it up. Just undo these half hitches and just give it a crank it on. But during a race, can't do it anyway, it's going to be very awkward. So that is all set up, ready for your next step. So right, we're going to rig the sail up. So taking the pro sail, rolling out all the way. And top section of the mast, making sure that Sliding cap was down towards the bottom end. Bottom section. Got two pins here. Well, one pin for two holes. So top hole is for the pro rig, just because it's that bigger sail. Bottom holes for the sport rig. If you have got uh, electrical tape or any sort of tape, 
maybe just a few rounds so you don't destroy the luff tube. Sliding it in to the top section, making sure that sliding cap is locked, not loose. Make sure it's locked so you don't snap the mast. Sliding it in the rest of the way. All the way in the top, should be able to feel it. And then in the bolt, just twisting it back again. Just give it a yank, make sure it is up there. And that is all good. So moving on to our downhaul system. So what you're gonna do is take the, the line with two ropes on, on either end with the dog bone feed it through the eyelet on the other side of the mast and then with those two ropes wrap around the mast. Simple reef knot but before tightening it making sure there is about a couple of centimetres for that dog bone just to sit up a bit high. Taking your next bit with the soft shackle with the two 20 mil blocks. I'm gonna go around the kicker handle, the lacing eye at the bottom of the mast. Soft shackle through with the knot. Once there, that's attached. Just quickly take the handle off. Got your pulley system through the cringle of the sail, around the dog bone. So that's attached. Once that's attached, through the cleat, then round the second block at the bottom of the mast where you can attach your handle. It's just a simple bowling at the bottom. And that is your easy setup downhaul with purchase. Making sure the 20 mil blocks are separated, not really touching that much. So there are some space. Benefits of having a dog bone for the downhaul, just easy to undo and put back on due to the shape of it over a bobble. And the braking load, especially in a, in a pro where you do crank it on, that dog bone is just probably more likely to hold And that is your downhaul. So now we're gonna move on to the outhaul system. So putting the boom on, when putting the boom on on the gooseneck, making sure it goes either side of the downhaul so you don't trap it. Clue strap on, be with the largest dog bone. So just through the cring of the sail. Around the boom. quickly do the main sheet. On the traveller block, go from back of the boat forward so it runs smoothly when you come back up to the top block. Because you don't, don't want the main sheet twisted. Simple hitch, main sheet sorted. So, moving on to the out hull. So, got the front block on the front of the boom fitted. Second block, just around the kicker loop, around that lacing eye. So, just soft shackle with the dog bone. So, floating block there. And 
the tie-on block, the 20 mil with the Dyneema end. So what we're gonna do, Dyneema end through the tie-on block at the end of the boom. Through that, from port side to the starboard side. Through the Kringle of the sail. And then just one or two stopper knots in the ends. I typically go for two, just for a safety perspective if one does come undone. There's a second one there. Then clip it into the end of the boom, just slide it in. Then you have your outhaul block sorted. Now the control line, with the handle already rigged up, we're gonna go on it backwards. So starting from the block around the kicker strap, through that block, so one end with the handle, one end with a small loop. Around the tie-on at the front of the mast. Front of the boom, sorry. Take that back to this block, floating block in the middle. Through there. And then that little loop slides onto that little handle there. So that's set up and then just your control line into that cleat so it stays in. Got a pulley, pull back. So when you do easy the out hole, it comes back. It will make the gap wider rather than you having to feed it and push the sail out. So we're gonna start off with the end without the snatch on. Gonna go through the little eyelet at the front. Tie that on with a bowline and two half hitches. From there, all the way back to the clue strap, and then just simply click it in place. Pull the outhaul on. When you do release it, the outhaul loosens back. And that is your outhaul rigged. So our next step is our kicker. So we're going to take our kicker already pre-made. When we're doing it with the strap around the top of the boom, you've got to make sure it goes all underneath these control lines so it sits around the boom nice and snug and make sure it goes in front of our outhaul. So. So after that's attached, soft shackle around the bottom of the mast, mast pointing forwards, feed it around the laces and eye around the bottom, make sure it doesn't get twisted with the downhaul. And with these soft shackles, try and get the knots next to the lace and eye. And from that loop, simply just clip the kicker on. And with this kicker, you might have noticed we've got two handles. So for light winds, use the handle out, furthest out. So that will be your first pulling on. When it gets a bit breezier, can't quite put it on up this angle. Got a second handle to pull the rest on. And then easily unclip. With this kicker as well, we can easily change the height of it. Got just two screws in here. Black plates come off and we can just change the angle of that. It all depends on where you need to release it and then re it again. So that is everything for now for all the systems and everything. As you probably could tell, they're already spliced to all the blocks. They're all the right lengths. As long as you can tie a few simple knots, you're all ready to get racing. Now we're going to move on to a few additional things that you can make add to your boat just to make life that little bit easier. Rising lines, a bit about the main sheets. So we're going to cover those right now. So what we're about to go through is some, something to do with writing lines. A lot of the time, they're really tight. They're not long enough, so you can't get your foot in if you have turtles. It just makes leverage that little bit easier of writing it. So what I've got here, got a writing line piece of rope that's just a little bit longer than the two holes. Normally, it's a bit of rope just between the two holes, but this will lengthen. So what you've got, you've got a length of rope and then a bungee the other end. 
tie together in the middle. So what you're gonna do, go up from the back hole all the way through, then down the front hole, and then just a simple knot tying it off. Then with the bungee, that is gonna to come to the back hole for your, by your traveler. You're gonna feed that up, pull a bit through, just tie it around itself on the back corner. Push that underneath. So when your boat is inverted and you can't quite get it up, that will extend. So you can put your foot in under there so you have that little bit more leverage when writing it. Both sides with the bungee so it all comes back neat. It's not going to sag in the water, not going to increase your drag, so it all fits nice and snug. Right, so just quickly something about the painter. Uh, class rules do say it has to be eight meters. That's mainly for towing purposes. So eight meters of rope, just see a lot of boats just throw it on the deck or throw it in the in the boat it can get quite messy. So what I recommend is a chain knot, just decreases the length by quite a lot. So if you don't know how to do it, so there's plenty of videos, tutorials out online. So go and have a watch of those, but literally it takes two seconds. It takes eight meters down to probably about a meter and a half. And then you can just wrap it around the mast with ideally a clip on the end. So when you wrap it around the mast once or twice, you can just clip it so it stays on the boat. So one last detail is if you would like to know exactly where the wind is coming from is to get an Allen Aero vane. They do do both one to go at the bottom of the mast, one to go at the top. This is one to go at the bottom, really easy to install, just around the front of the mast, inside of the downhaul clips in and the cap surrounds it. You can have one at the top. For class rules, you can only have one or the other. You can't have both. So personally, I would recommend having one at the top. It makes you look at your sail. So you can have a look at all your, your tail tails. You can have a look at the fourth corner for the pro rig. Also fourth corner tail tails around the leech. Just makes you have a look at the sail a little bit more. But if you like having one at the bottom, have one at the bottom but there are other ways you can have them at the top as well so that's it all for today these allen products make life that little bit easier on the water i've always enjoyed them on the fever 29er 600s and in the terror when i was sailing so if you like any more details go to the website allenbrothers.co.uk if you have any questions or queries drop the sales team a quick call they're always happy to help like always and hopefully see you on the water. Thank you.